Now it's time to actually pack all of these UVs together. Everything you see here has to fit inside of this one square because ultimately we're going to be using one set of textures for this entire object. So I'll start with the biggest items first. I'll grab these down here, these being the corrugated walls. And I'll set those up so they're just inside. I might need to scale them down a little bit to make sure that they're totally inside. Okay, looking good. You always want there to be a little bit of a gap just in case there's some problems with the resolution that you're exporting the UV snapshot at. Okay, and then I'm going to put the roof on. Now the roof we're not going to be seeing as much as the side, so I'm going to scale it down a little bit. Scale down a little bit more maybe. There we go. And remember, the side is not actually this long. It's important to remember that it is corrugated, so when you flatten it out, it's going to lengthen a bit. Okay. Now let's tackle the doors, the other really large bit. So as you remember, as I was doing with the corrugated sheets, I need to know which of these edges is the top. So that looks like the top of one, and I'm willing to bet Yep, that's the top of the other. So one of these shells needs to be rotated because that was the top and that was also a top. So I'll rotate the one on bottom 180 degrees. Turn on snapping and snap it. And then these, these are the these are the inside of these insets. They're not terribly important, at least with regards to whether or not they're right side up or upside down. So I'm just going to snap them all together as one big set of overlapping shells. See if I can adjust this ever so slightly. It doesn't have to be perfect in most cases. Grab that, move it off to the side a bit. Okay, those are looking pretty good. That's all looking very nice. Okay. So I'll move the door the doors in first. So it's important to keep in mind that this width right here is what we have established for being the width of the container itself. Now granted we're gonna we did shrink this a little bit because it's not as important as the sides. But I'll scale this down. might be able to squeeze in something small over there on the edge. Grab this guy, move him just on top. Same thing for the hexagons. Excellent. The next large piece would have been the cables, which are these over here. So remember, one of these was only about half the width or half the length of the shipping container. So measure that out roughly. Looks like it's about that wide. Wonder if I rotate this 90 degrees. Can I? I believe I can. If I move this over just slightly, and then I move. these two over. By the way, that was uh, hitting the B key, and I get these little dashed lines. I can then drag a box and select that way. Sometimes it's a little bit faster than holding down control. There we go.
and there you have it. And now the UVs have been packed and it's ready to go. So I'll save it. I'll join those two areas together. So the last thing I want to cover is how to export this. And there's a few different ways. I personally am going to be taking this into Endu in order to texture it, or at least to give it some normal maps. And Endu works best with .obj files. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, Export, Selected, OBJ. This export selected option is a script that I downloaded for Blender. I will link to where I got it in the description. However, if you don't have it, then you should still just be able to export as an OBJ and check selection only. I personally just find it a bit easier to go with the script that lets me pick selected items. So here's how you need to export this in order to preserve the smoothing groups because there's quite a few settings you need to check on in order to preserve this soft and hard information. So again, export OBJ. It's down here in your export options. And what you need to do is first uncheck apply modifiers because we don't want those edge split modifiers to actually be applied. We also don't need to write materials because that'll write a separate .mat file, which we don't need. And we need to check to export smooth groups. And we need to tell it to write normals because the smooth groups have to do with the normal information about the model. And this will allow us to write that information into the OBJ file. Then finally, just need to choose a uh, spot to export it. So texture models and so on shipping container and I will export selected. Right, so that is my workflow for modeling basic low poly yet highly detailed assets in Blender. We need I explained how to keep in mind your poly count and how best to optimize it, how to optimize your UVs, and ultimately how to properly export this model out of Blender so we can use it in other texturing applications. I hope you found it useful or at the very least interesting, and thank you for watching.